All right, check my check one two one two like they used to say. Is that does that work? Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, Charles, you can hear us. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, as long as we can hear him, we're so sorry. We're having technical difficulties because we're trying to be modernized. But I'm telling you, old school is better. I, this is the comment section still. I'm still Shirley Ann Phillips the third, and I hope that all can see, all can hear, because I have an amazing guest here today. Um, this is part two of the interview that we did last week, or not the interview, but the event that we went to a couple weekends ago, where we were focusing on a special, I want to say young lady, but she's a grown ass woman out here, but I want to say a special young lady who has devoted her spare time and some of the time that she really doesn't even have to spare to um, an issue. I don't even want to call it an issue. I want to say um, to a cause, to a cause that is very near and dear to my heart because I deal with it too. And it is Miss, I don't know, should we call you T? How you, how do you tell me how you want us to introduce you? T you can call me whatever you desire to call me. But I <laughs> And you could also refer to me as young lady. I am fine with you that. You fine with that? Yes. <laughs> okay, young lady, because she definitely took me back to high school when she said that I, I was reminiscent of a young mm -hmm. Janet Jackson. That's, that, that made my whole 2024 just now. So thank you, beloved. I appreciate it. But um, I'm going to call her Miss... Um, Tara's fine. Let's call her Miss Tara. Miss Tara is the founder and mm -hmm. the um she's the ceo she's the executive director she's the planner she is the founder of seize the cure for epilepsy and that is the cause that we both kind of bonded over mm -hmm. um i met her in an odd way i was actually just perusing something don't judge me but i was looking up stuff about prince because prince suffered from epilepsy a lot of people don't know that he suffered from childhood and um the last time that i was in minnesota and went to Paisley Park because yes, I've been there a couple of times because I'm kind of a stalker, but it's okay. <laughs> but there's rumors that he may have passed away from a seizure that he may have had in the elevator of um, his home, and nobody talks about it. So I was just one day, you know, minding my business, and I came across this wonderful group of people who were doing positive, active, proactive work. Uh, over epilepsy, seizure disorder, um, triggers, events. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I happened to see this event called Seize the Cure for Epilepsy. And it looked like it was something that happened often because this young lady had quite a few followers, quite a few notable people that she had involved. And um, it seemed that everybody in it, including like the uh, Grammy Award winning, what? Grammy Award winning group Allure who has a couple of hits that I, I like from um, my in the club years, but um, <laughs> they were performing lots of local Bronx uh, performers, hip hop, jazz, um, poets were there in support of her. So I'm gonna let Miss Tara, um, or is it T Vita or TJ? How do you, how, what's your DJ name? Tell me one more time. TJ Vita. That's TJ Vita. Mm -hmm. That's her stage name. That's her alter ego. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't DJ. <laughs> I can't even manage a computer the right way. I don't want to have you have DJ equipment. No, no, no. Yo. <laughs> if y'all knew what we want to old school. I'm not with this new technology. Mm -hmm. Nah, not for me. He'd be a pen and a paper. Emmanuel used to make fun of me. He said I was like Harriet the Spy because I walk around with my notebook and my pen all the time. But I have to because pen and paper don't fail. But that's what I was doing with when I was planning the event. I was in the hotel room and I had my pen and paper and I was writing everything. And what well, you know, other people were sitting there typing and doing notes, and I'm like, nope, I'm writing. I'll do this later when I have time to figure out this computer stuff. I'ma write it. And and the thing about writing, I'm gonna let you get to what you guys said. The thing about writing it, once you write it, somehow it makes you committed to memory better, at least for people like us. Maybe that's just how our brain works. Uh, but I'm going to let her tell you guys a little bit more about what she does. We know that she's an awesome event planner. We know that she has, you know, stage presence and she has a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a presence in general in New York, because that's where she's from. So tell us some more, Miss Tara, about what it is you do 
and why you do it. Okay. Where do I start? Uh, well, first and foremost, um, I don't say this often, but I myself have epilepsy. Um, I don't, I'm very well controlled. I'm not even taking medication right now. And that's not because I'm just being difficult or in denial. It's just I'm that well controlled. Yeah. Um, so I don't necessarily need medication right now for that. Um, okay. And right, even with so, my seizures were more absent seizures where you'll find that sometimes you'll find me stuttering or I'm having a hard time getting my words out. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you speak so well, but I remember a time that I spoke a lot better than what I do now. And now it's just more of me practicing. So I'm getting comfortable with speaking more because the seizures have done that to me. And the medications honestly made it worse. So that's another reason why I'm, I'm glad I'm controlled and don't need to be on medication because I felt that they were me messing me up more cognitively than anything. Um, that being said, I never really understood much about epilepsy. You know, when you have it, it's one thing, but when you have a child that has it, it's a whole nother ball game. Um, I'm a recording artist, actress, radio host, and I also am the spokesperson for domestic violence, um, sex crimes. Um, I, decided in 2017 my son was diagnosed with epilepsy um he started spacing out in school a lot his attention span was extremely short and they wanted to evaluate him and of course diagnose him with adhd i was very well aware of because of my situation of what epilepsy was and how similar the symptoms are to adhd so i had him checked by a neurologist when he was about seven years old and the neurologist diagnosed him after doing a number of tests that he was epileptic. Um, he had not had convulsions at that point. It was more the same thing I had, absent seizures. Um, when he was about 13, I want to say, he came home. Um, he was in the hospital for testing. And when he came home, it was a Saturday. I'll never forget this. I was in my kitchen cooking and he was sitting on the couch with my daughter and she was cracking up and I took it like he was making her laugh. So when I looked real quick, he was on the couch and he kept going, uh, 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 you know, I thought he was playing around. So I go back into the kitchen. I continue cooking and she's, he's still doing it. So at that point I said, Malik, just stop, just stop. And he just kept doing it. So, you know, as a mother with a teenage boy, you think he's just being defiant. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go rip his head off. I go into the living room, stop. I'm yelling at him to stop. But then when I looked at him, he wasn't responsive. He didn't, he wasn't hearing me. I didn't know what I was looking at. So I start, you know, I start trying to touch him. I'm like, Malik, wake up. I'm, sh I'm pushing him to, you know, to respond. And that's when I knew something was very wrong. I was so nervous that I had the phone in my hand, but I'm running through the house looking for it to call 911. My neighbor heard me screaming and came into my door to help. Um, so, you know, thank God for him. You know, I, I had a, a, a gentleman that lived with his three sons that were all in their twenties. So they always looked out for me. That was the first time I've ever seen a seizure. And I still didn't know what it was till I got to the hospital and they said what it was. Now I'm thinking maybe, you know, medication was something that triggered it or that brought it. I'm thinking this is an isolated situation. It was a one-time thing. You know, he's going to come home. He's going to be good. I never would have believed that this would have became a part of our everyday life. And you said prior to that, you had already suffered with absence seizures. Absence seizures. And I, I hadn't had a convulsion. Or I did have a convulsion, a few of them when I was younger. But when you have a convulsion versus someone, you seeing someone have one, it's so different. Because when I had my convulsions, I remember waking up and I didn't know what happened. And by the grace of God, I was in a safe situation where, you know, nothing bad happened. There was one where I was pregnant and I remember I was taking a bath, but, you know, my the father was there. So he, you know, got me out in time. Um, I don't remember anything. So seeing it, I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know what to think. And when it's your son or your child in general, it's that that fear of what you're looking at and you know something's wrong and you don't know what to do. 
And that's the thing about it. Um, you and I actually, or I think it was either you and I or one of the doctors at your event, we were talking about how we don't understand why educators, teachers, daycare, why are they not taught seizure first aid when they're getting uh -huh. a patient? Because they teach us CPR, they teach us how to, you know, Heimlich maneuver, but they don't teach seizure CPR. And there are so many students from zero to college that have suffered with this. Um, I'm not even going to say suffered, that have had to deal with this. And, and they often have them during the school day. Right. So in your experience, um, where do you think doctors have failed? People that um, either have been fully diagnosed with epilepsy or who just maybe had one or two isolated seizures, where do you think doctors fail or neurologists fail us the most or most often? with this and in instructing us or advising us? This is a tough one because I personally don't blame the doctors. I worked in medical for a very long time. So I've seen the other side of the scope of the legalities and the politics that are involved in healthcare. I have had, I've been privileged to have some great doctors for myself and for my son. Now, there are exceptions to the rule, and I can give you a perfect example. Um, there was a point that my son was seeing a doctor, a neurologist, and the neurologist did not know how to help him. He wasn't responsive to medication. Nothing was working. So they had him go see an epileptologist. Realistically, an epileptologist only has an additional two years of experience in epilepsy. Huh? I was going to say, I've never heard of that type of uh, doctor. Yeah. It's a specialized neurologist that deals just with epilepsy. But again, it's, we're talking about two additional years. It's not, a, it's not that much more of studying when it comes to it. But it is what it is. They, they specialize in epilepsy, strictly epilepsy. And that's who he started seeing. Um, I did not care for the doctor. I do understand that there are rules that they have to follow and they're supposed to, you know, epilepsy is one of those conditions that it's kind of a trial and error. You are a guinea pig, no matter how you want to look at it, um, because we just don't know which medication is going to work. Sometimes you need more than one medication. Sometimes it takes a number of different treatments combined and you don't know until you actually try them if it's going to work. And it takes time to know if it's going to work because if your pattern is once a month, it's going to take you a good six months to know if the pattern switches up or the number of seizures decreases or increases. So that this particular doctor, um, she rubbed me the wrong way because at first I asked her about CBD oil and you know, she, she, downplayed, <laughs> she downplayed me and said, well, you know, it, it, CBD oil is not proven to really help. I said, well, none of these medications have really proven to help. So it's something more organic and natural. I, I would like to try it. And when she tells me, well, you know, it is very expensive. Naturally, my first de defense was, so are you trying to say because I'm from the Bronx and I'm a Latina, I can't afford? You know, that's not your business. That's not your place. That's <laughs> and I told her, that's, you know, with all due respect, that's not your business. <laughs> unless you're offering money out of your salary you should not worry about where i'm getting the money from so that was the first <laughs> yeah. oh my God, i want to try it that was the first experience with her um the second one and this has to do with your question which is why i'm bringing this example when you have epilepsy you go into the hospital at least once a year to go under a three to five day video monitoring eeg and what that is is they they have electrodes connected to your brain and they monitor to see when you're having seizure activity, what you're doing while you're having the seizure activity, how often are you having them while you're sleeping or while you're um, breathing heavy or whatever the case. So now we're talking about four years into my son having epilepsy and she wants to put him in for a week because I hadn't recorded a seizure. So she decides to tell me that being that we don't have proof of a seizure, you know, there is something called, I forget the name, forgive me, um, but pretty much psychiatric seizures. You know how it is. When they can't prove stuff, they got to pin it to a psych. So 
I'm like, listen, I'm not downing anyone who may have psychiatric seizures, but this is not the case with my son. And we're not going to bypass that. I'm not going to chase him with a camera while he's convulsing because unfortunately when he convulses, his life has been put at serious risk. He has holes in his stomach from the bathtub knobs going in there. He's had them in the pool, in the water. I'm not in a position to grab my phone and record him. And honestly, even if he was in a safe situation, I'm his mother. It's just not something I'm going to think of. Let me record my son having a seizure. So she wanted to put him in for a week to prove it. And I said, well, you know what? If you're going to if you're going to admit him and make this money and this hospital is going to make this money off of my insurance, then we're going to have make him have a seizure. I'm going to sleep deprive him. I'm going to malnutrition him. I'm going to stick him in front of video games the whole entire time. I have his video games hooked up into the room and I want a bike in the room. If you cannot provide a bike in the room for him to work out, he is not being admitted. They, they accepted what I asked. What do you think happened? Day four, he convulsed. After going on the bike, after I made him lose sleep, I didn't feed him as much. I made him sit in front of the video games all those days. And the day four, I said, okay, it's time for you to go on the bike. That was the hardest, hardest thing I ever had to do just to prove that my son has a serious condition and we're not going to pass it off to psychiatric. Now, and, and this is what I just actually had this conversation with two people earlier today. And what I'm trying to get people to understand, and you can completely empathize with me, why does it take, and I don't care who gets offended by it, People don't take black and brown people serious about what we know to be true based on our experience until a rich white person gets on television or just someone rich. Get, if Kim Kardashian gets on TV and says it, that, oh, maybe the seizures are caused by, I don't know, sleep deprivation instead of, or stress instead of, people will take it serious. You've been experiencing it. I know people. Myself, I've experienced nocturnal daytime. I've experienced all of them. I've found a way to stop them, and I'm with you. I don't really see the point of medication at this point mm -hmm. because I know what the triggers are. Yeah. And the blessing with my curse, and it sounds like you have the same, is I get auras. Mm -hmm. So I, an aura, for those that don't know, is basically it looks different for different people. It could be a, a weird uh, smell, a weird sound, a weird taste. It could be a weird, like, deja vu feeling, which mm -hmm. is your body mm -hmm. telling you, go somewhere and sit down. You're about to have a seizure. And mine, trigger number one, stress. I teach eighth grade in the South Bronx. <laughs> Enough said, right? I don't know how you look so young. <laughs> I love your peoples in them, but they can stress you out because they're stressed mm -hmm. out. So what I want to ask you is, at what point did you realize that, you know what, I think I got this better than the doctors? Because I was terrified at first to limit my meds. I wanted to do everything that the neurologist said because I did not want to have another one. At what point did you say, you know what, I got this, enough is enough, let's go holistic? Um... I got tired of dealing with the medication changes. I got tired of, and don't get me wrong, he still saw a doc. He still saw a doctor. Um, I changed his hospital actually, and I'm not gonna say the hospital is on here because obvious for obvious reasons. But I changed the hospital to a doctor that is more in favor of holistic approaches. Um, I knew what to ask when I was looking for a new doctor for him. So she, this particular doctor. The minute I met her and we did the consultation, the first thing I said was, I really want to try something that's more natural. And that's when he was uh, prescribed Epidiolex, which is an FDA approved um, CBD oil for epilepsy. And he was taking that for a while. And that was the way to go. Um, there's so much I can go into like a two hour show with this. Um, doctors are forced to follow protocol and, uh, requirements for the medications they choose for hospitalizations. They have to follow a lot of rules 
And if they don't, it's on them. It's like for a teacher, if all your students are progressing and they're doing well, then it looks good for you. If your students are not doing well and it's more than half, that reflects on you as a teacher. Doctors are in the same position. Okay, they have to have statistics of their patients improving or not improving. They have to deal with healthcare rules and insurances and their rules. It's 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 not easy for doctors. Um, I've never blamed doctors for the lack of resources that I wasn't given. Because honestly speaking, I feel that with epilepsy, there should be a whole different separate department for people who are diagnosed with epilepsy or anyone of your child is diagnosed. If I would have had someone that I went to see and laid out what to expect, majority of the time people with epilepsy end up having convulsions at some point. That's, point. that's the reality Absolutely. of it. I don't care what they say. Well, they don't have to listen. At some point it's going to happen. Someone needs to come to this family's house and show them what to safeguard so that way in the event the person has a seizure they are safe they need to have the proper bed or the proper carpeting or whatever safety measures or um uh for example um uh, i forget what they call it. it's like a video monitor so that way to make sure that the person's safe in their sleep all these things should be accessible regardless of your income to someone who is diagnosed with epilepsy absolutely because it's, it doesn't matter. Right. And unfortunately, if you're diagnosed as a child, the challenges are going to be ever changing throughout life. My son's challenges at 13 and 14 with epilepsy are different from now that he's 21 and becoming a man and technically legal, but limitations because he has epilepsy. So where are the resources for those who are turning into adulthood that need the help? For example, your brain, your brain chemistry is changing. Um, and, you know, he's at that age. I don't know his lifestyle, but I do know that when I was his age or when I was in early college, we did a lot of drinking and partying. And hello, I haven't had a, an alcoholic beverage in five years because I figured out alcohol is no good because when I was having the uh, seizures in my sleep, it was usually after a night of no sleep, hanging out, partying, drinking, bottomless brunches, kicking it with my friends. I didn't, I didn't experience this first seizure ever in life until, um, oh boy, I was like 34, 35. Wow. Never had a seizure in my life. I didn't know what that was. And at the time, praise God, I was with someone um, and my, he was able to see, okay, you sleep weird. You're doing something in your sleep. And he had enough sense to know, I think she might be having a seizure. I would have had no idea because they were while I was sleeping and I, it made sense because I would wake up with these horrible migraine headaches, back of my tongue was bitten. And I'm like, what is happening? It was a damn seizure, Tara, yeah. and I didn't know it. And like you said, it eventually turns into something that happens during the day. Yeah. So tell me about, um, cause I don't want to take up all your time. I know you're a busy woman, but tell me about some of the, the things that people can do who have friends or family, or maybe it's them, things that they can do or say to try to comfort people that are dealing with this, especially if they witness them having a seizure, what's something they can say so that they don't feel like a complete leper or, you know, an alien with this illness or disorder? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes not saying anything at all is the best thing you could say, because unless you can relate to it, understanding and relating are two different things you know um sometimes it's like you'll give advice to someone not really understanding how much they're affected just something as simple as i support you well what do you need from me or what can i do to help you you know and, and i and that goes as far as to the parents who have a child because let me tell you something Epilepsy, just like any condition that is life-threatening, affects the parent from having a job, okay? Because let's face it, when you're working, all the time you have to take off to go to doctors and do testing. And if there's symptoms that a, a, a seizure's coming, you're not going to leave your kid alone. 
or if your kid gets hurt from having a seizure, you're going to be home. The amount of days that you end up losing working is hard to keep a job. It's hard to keep a job. And disability, unfortunately, I know a number of people who have applied for disability that have epilepsy, that have frequent seizures that were denied disability. Wow. Okay. Where wow. are the resources? No matter what anyone says, you can't comfort someone who is not only experiencing the seizures, but they're experiencing life and their limitations and no solution. The best thing you could do is research and try to find help for that person. Another example, we live in Florida. My son can't drive. Not yet. So what happens to people that can't drive that have epilepsy like yeah new york has all these means of transportation but even then if you go on a train in the subway and you have a seizure and fall on the train tracks now yeah you can say well you know what you're not supposed to stand next to the train track okay but on a five you know on a a, a crowded train <laughs> platform you can't tell someone to just push their way to the wall you know let's just be realistic we need more help with there's no cure for epilepsy. That's a known fact. There's no cure. You can go 10 years seizure free and then boom, all of a sudden they start coming back. Okay. Yep. So there is no cure. It is what it is. Let's face the fact. So the question is, what can we do to help the person have a norm, the most normal life as possible for their situation? And it goes like that with any condition. Everyone's different. You have some people who may have, my son has was having seizures once a month. There's some people that are having multiple seizures a day. Yeah. You know? I actually just learned this um, a couple of weeks ago. I was speaking with a parent about a student because they kept trying to say, oh, he has ADD. And I'm like, mm, I, don't, I, said, I don't, this doesn't look like ADD to me. I'm not a specialist, but I, said, I think he might be having multiple absence seizures i'm like have you ever heard of it she said no and this was his mom she said he's just lazy he's just inattentive and i'm like nah because sometimes i'll call this person's name like hi so and so hello can you hear me and then he'll be like what what'd you say he doesn't know what happened it only lasts for a few seconds yeah and the neurologist said kids especially can have those types of seizures hundreds of times a day and not even realize it that th blew me away and the first thing they want to do, unfortunately, with people of color, yes, I'm I'm on that, is try to say, oh, they're crazy. Oh, they have ADD. Oh, they just don't pay attention. They don't care. And I'm like, somebody needs to investigate that because yeah. something is going on. Um, that's why I that's why I'm so passionate about this. You know, I moved to Florida three years ago and, and jumping back into how I started C Secure in 2017, I only planned on doing one event. It, it was it was just something to do to connect to my artistry and the epilepsy foundation of new york came out you know on a wind i just called out googled it and said you know i'm just going to do an event do you mind coming to support and he came and it went great after that i had a few more events more small compared to the most recent um didn't have any sponsors it was just pretty much personal people donating to support or donate to help. Um, and then in 2019, I had my first workshop where I had a doctor from Presbyterian come out and she gave a, a 45 minute workshop on epilepsy, the basics of it. And that's when I was by the Epilepsy Foundation appointed to represent the Bronx. Now, 2020, I was bringing C Secure to the schools. So there was a particular school in the Bronx that I met with the director of PAL at the time. And she want, she never heard of epilepsy. She's never seen a seizure. But she's like, you know, I like what you bring to the table. How would it help our parents here who are predominantly Spanish and a lot of African? Um, I said, well, I would focus more on them knowing how to get help. Yeah. Rather than their child be diagnosed with classic ADHD. So I, I had an interpreter. We had the whole event planned out, which was supposed to be March 18th. 
that's when COVID hit. Yeah. So that week, the schools were shut down. So I said, okay, we'll reschedule this event. No one thought COVID would last as long as it did. So the event never happened because I ended up moving. A year later from me moving here, I get a call from her crying that God brought me into her life because her son now started having convulsions. And he was in a very, very bad, very bad state. And she says, I don't know if you're still doing C's the Cure or where you are, but please keep doing it. And you have my support. That just. That is crazy. That just like. I'm going to tell you. It I, it's like a mirror. I'm, I feel like I'm hearing myself because I ha I can't say because you got to protect people's privacy. But I had someone that I worked with at a school who had found out that I did deal with this. Came to me a few years later. I didn't even work at that school anymore, mm -hmm. and was like, "Can you please help me? Because my wife, out of nowhere, has started having this in her sleep, and I told her about you. I'm like, out of nowhere." And this person was like, I don't know what the hell is going on in the Bronx, but something's going on in the Bronx or where there are a large demographic of people of color. Yeah. Never dealt with this before. And now I'm starting to think maybe COVID triggered some things or maybe it's what is being put in our food, the seasoning, the Takis, the, it's something specific to our areas. And it's, it has nothing to do with money. Right, right. It's, it's a lot. Um, I, at that time, I had a, did a presentation for a pharmaceutical um, company that deals with advocacy for epilepsy. And this was like during the time that that parent that I spoke to. And I didn't think anything was going to kind of come out of it, you know. Um, long story short, that's where this recent event came from. You know, the Epilepsy Foundation director called me and he's like, listen. We want you to represent the Bronx. The presentation you did, they don't want to deal with nobody else but you. They loved your honesty, your bluntness. They love that you keep it yeah. real. Like, and they feel like, you know, you understand your people. So if you can do two, can you commit to two to three events a year or programs? I'm like, yeah, as long as I got a flight, I'm good. No problem. <laughs> and interestingly i was supposed to have this event in november but i felt like it wasn't going the way it was supposed to i felt like the timing wasn't adequate mm -hmm. so i ended up saying nope i don't want to do it in november it has to be next year it needs yeah. to go on my time frame i know what i want how i want it and i need time so he says okay fine connected the dots i went out there in november to new york i met with i did a presentation for the board of directors at that community center they unanimously voted for me to do the event. And as I'm coming on the plane back to Florida, News 12 hits me up. And, <laughs> excuse me, they emailed me. <laughs> and they're like, are you doing anything for Epilepsy Awareness Month? Because, you know, we know that you advocate for, for epilepsy and we would like to do a story. I said, no, but I am doing something in March and I, I can come out in November. And you can do a story at the place where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. And the person, the, the mother that I had on that News 12 interview was the mother that had called me. She was at the event. She spoke with her son there. Wow. Um, I love it. Yeah. So everything, it's like God was saying, I, I'm going to reassure you, this is what needs to be done. And you need right. to follow how I'm telling you to do it. Right. It That's was right. supposed to be in March. And interestingly, you had messaged me after the prospective date was supposed to happen. Yep. Politics got involved, yep. you know, uh, the yep. elections. So that was a designated voting site. So I had to change the date. And I was forced uh -huh. to say, you know what? April 20th. Now, it never dawned in my brain. 420, and yeah, you know the connection with 420. I wasn't even thinking about that. So it was so funny how it naturally just happened like that. But um, it just, everything just happened with God telling me, and I followed it. And the difference with this recent event is, number one, I had sponsors for the event. It was the first yeah. fundraiser, and I'm still fundraising because what I'm fundraising for is, me to do advocacy programs in the Bronx. 
Meaning I don't want to do just workshops. I don't want to, I want to do all that, but I want to do a music tour where we're going to hospitals. Absolutely. For the patients and the families that are affected by this music is mm -hmm. therapy. And I am a musician. Uh, that was the point of bringing performances and music to seize the cure events. Um, I also mm -hmm. want to focus more on the advocacy for mandated workshops and trainings in our school system and our mm -hmm. justice system. And many people don't know this, but our EMS are not trained in seizure safety. Not all of them. They're not. They're not They're trained. Not. That needs to be They're mandated. Not. It needs to be mandated. Principals, teachers, EMS, police, everybody, they need to know. And if I work I at CVS behind the that's counter, I, I need to be trained. Mm -hmm. And for you, the fact that you mentioned um, bringing it to schools, they have budgets for this stuff. You just have to get yourself you know, the right. You, you probably know this already, but principals have budgets. And this is something that I think at the beginning of every school year, you need to be able to go in and or have some people come into schools and do workshops so that people are comfortable. And what I loved about your event was that you had all of these wonderful, well-known entertainers, some from the Bronx, some not, who admitted openly that yeah. they suffered with this. And the more you hear that, it becomes normalized and people are like, okay, you know, Tara's having a seizure right now. I know to do A, B, and C. So, and, and not make her feel weird when she comes yeah. back to herself. This event was so sentimental because while I didn't raise the amount of money I wanted to, and, and that's fine because you can fundraise through the whole year. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a cutoff date. CC Cure is privately funded, privately owned. So yeah. I can fundraise as much as I want. What was beautiful about it was as big as it was, every day I donated two to three hours. Yeah. To emails, calling people. I wanted to know everyone personally. I didn't want to just say, you know what? Nice meeting you. Um, and type a, an email to you. Here's the flyer. Come out. And I made a personal relationship with everyone that was involved because I wanted to get to know the personal story. Right. And there were some people there that I wanted to speak with. There was just not, not enough time which the next event they will be speaking mm -hmm. <laughs> so um it was just everything was just so beautiful about it allure had came out to a prior event at a school in rockland county mm -hmm. a post program that i did an event for the kids mm -hmm. and one of the members of allure came out i had no idea she was there until she was there and that was because she wanted to see what i was doing and when she saw the students and how they were yeah. she mm -hmm. said, I don't care where you're at or what you're doing, we are I'm in. coming. We got you. <laughs> and, and they, I, I did get the opportunity to speak to them and they were telling me how they experienced it firsthand. They had people that deal with that, that they know and are related to, and they were so happy that you were doing it. And they, um, the performances were amazing. So even if you don't know anybody that's watching, if you don't know anybody that suffers or have it, or you have it, come out to an event. If you see an event that's focusing on epilepsy or seizure disorder, as I like to call it, because I'm not claiming epilepsy and I'm not claiming it for you. I'm just going to say it's something that we deal with that causes seizures. Okay. Yeah. Go to the event and learn and hear these stories. Brandy, the artist, Brandy, Moesha, Brandy, she had a whole seizure in her home and fell on the steps and nearly died. I think it was last year or the year before. It was on Shave Room, neighborhood talk, but nobody checked on her to see if she's willing to speak about it or she could have died. And it was from a seizure. And they said they don't know how, why, what. When you hear more people talk about it that are reputable, notable in the public eye, that's when people start to pay attention, unfortunately. Un yeah, unfortunately, that, that is the truth. And it started really being talked about when Cameron Boyce died. Now, Cameron Boyce, you know, famous actor in um, a Disney show, and... He had epilepsy, but never spoke about it. Never it didn't spoke. come out until after, which I understand the parents, you know, I'm not going to judge that. He's in the public eye. I could, yeah. I get it. I completely get it. 
Yeah. But now he died off. He had a seizure in his sleep. Mm. And all of a sudden, that's when everybody started waking up and paying attention. Like, oh, that's when people now. Flojo. That's oh gosh, this camera is driving me crazy. Flojo. <laughs> Florence Griffith Joyner, fastest woman in the world. Back, she died of a seizure in her sleep, you guys. And 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 rather than them dealing with the fact that she suffered from that for so long, they tried to put it on. Oh, she was taking steroids, and that's why she had a seizure. No, it's not. She dealt with it, but she didn't talk a lot about it. About it. And then I just made a connection with you and your son. Maybe her with the the stress in her body out with running and training, and on top of that, to go to sleep. And you die sudden, un unexpected death mm -hmm. from epilepsy, SUDEP or SUDEP, however you want to say it. Can you imagine people that don't deal with this? The, the fear every night that you go to bed that I may not wake up because I might turn my face over and suffocate myself in my pillow because I had a seizure. That's what we deal with. So if you don't have to deal with that, you need to count and thank your lucky stars and help these people like Miss Tara, myself, Allure, anybody that you see that is trying to find a cure for this, because I believe that there is one. They just don't want us to know it because they don't want to lose the money on the, the pharmaceuticals. Um, before we have to wrap this up, Tara, can you tell us, if you're willing, you don't have to, if you feel mm -hmm. like it's a legal issue, can you tell us some of the holistic things? Because I know CBD, 420, I don't smoke, but... THC, let me put it the technical way. THC is a known holistic uh, remedy, not remedy, but support for people that have seizures. Can you tell us some other things that we can do without taking um, doctor recommended medications that might help us lessen these episodes? I'm not clinical, so I don't really know much about technical, like holistic thing. I'm, I'm still looking into a lot of things. Because even with holistic approaches, you still have to be careful. Everyone's yes. body is different. I know a few people I've spoken to that have um, taken THC, you know, medical marijuana. Um, and unfortunately, they've mm. had bad reactions to Good. where the seizures worse. Mm. Uh, so you have to be very careful. It, all I will say is I know there's certain vitamins that or vitamin deficiencies that are um connected to seizure increase like and, which ones uh vitamin vitamin b vitamin b deficiency uh magnesium there's certain wow. vitamins that i've read on that you can take to help but again it all depends on you know your body and what other medications you're taking because vitamins and medications can conflict with each other just as Absolutely. even if you're on medication for other illnesses that you may have, especially in your older community, yeah, you're going to have people that have more than one condition. Epilepsy is just one, but they may have diabetes. And the medication for diabetes could interact with um, seizure medications. And That's right. So you have to be very careful. Um, it's really hard, but I know the keto diet is one that a lot of people have looked into. So mm -hmm. being a dietitian may be a good way to go. Absolutely. They can actually go through your all everything about you and find what fits for you. With my son, I looked into the keto diet, but they advised against it only because when you have a high number of seizures, having your body go through that shock. Yep. A rapid shock, mind you. It's like your diet switches one, two, three, and that will actually put your body through more convulsion. Thank you for saying that. I just got into a very heated discussion with someone about this. And this person was like, no, because um, my neurologist does not like when I switch diets and I try to lose weight. Oh, I got to lose 20 pounds or so. And so he hates when I do low glycemic. He hates when I do low carb. He hates when I just monitor my sugar in general because it no. tends to like you said, send my body into shock like those first three or four days. Mm -hmm. And low blood sugar for me makes my brain wiry, gives me headaches, um, even if I'm hydrated. And so he doesn't like when I do it because for him, he says, I believe that could be. And so this person that I was um, 
the in the heated discussion with was that's no, that's not true. Everybody knows that keto and low carb helps. I said everybody's body is different. We're not monolithic. Thank you for saying that. That that's just made the rest of my year. Thank you. That's just common sense, though. It's it's like if we were all the same, we wouldn't have so many options of medications. Thank you. So it's just, you know, anything that you put into your body or anything that you any anything that you put into your body, we all react different. Ashwagandha. I used to take ashwagandha, the edible ashwagandha. Ashwagandha, for those that don't know, it's just an, an herb that you know it tends to relax, calm you. If you have trouble sleeping, had a rough day, they say, Oh, girl, take you some ashwagandha, or you know, that actually can trigger seizures. I I didn't know that till a couple of years ago. They said if you have a seizure disorder, epilepsy, stay away from ashwagandha because it actually causes people sometimes to go into convulsions. I had no idea. That's Fiber. I started taking the gummies for that. See there? <laughs> no, but it may not be the same for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I haven't had any issues so far, but it's like you said, you know, sometimes wow. it takes time for something to, you don't know. But, you know, yeah, I'm I'm a very high strung person. Like I'm very, in the little time you've got to know me, you see, I'm very like, I'm, I have to have things perfect. I have to, <laughs> I didn't I see sleep it. Anything, I, I never slept. <laughs> <laughs> he has that person that that's why we get along so well because whereas i will you know go and silently do it she's very much i said what i said nope this is how we're doing it and she's very organized i'm organized in my mind and i'm organized in my task but she's organized from a to b which is a gift and a curse because what that does for people that don't know because she's a perfectionist that can create stress for her Stress, cortisol, cortisol leads to seizures as well. That's so sometimes, do you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes people like her who would probably be a perfect assistant for someone like me because my life is a mess. I'm a Pisces. Hello. So you look at my desk like, ma'am, what are you doing? But because <laughs> I'm not internalizing the stress, I might be good. But for her, she'll get my life together and everything will be perfect. But now she's like, oh, my God. And yeah. she's stressed now. I wasn't so, sleeping because I had so many people that was involved with this and yeah. I did not want, I had sponsors and you know what sponsors you, that's where the money's coming for you to have this. And the pressure was immense. I started, one of my triggers is stress and yeah, me too. It took a long time for the stress to build up a few weeks before the event. I started my symptoms, my aura. I see colored spots Ooh. that don't really oh, wow. like this. And even the day of the event, I was seeing it before. I just didn't say anything, but I just had to breathe, breathe. I was you watching know? you though. I, I made sure we were doing an interview. <laughs> I kept you in the corner of my eye. Because I'm like, was, this is a lot. <laughs> I was getting the aura and my auras could happen a month before it actually hits. So I had to be very careful, but you know, luckily I was okay. It, it was a stress and I know, you know, it was a great event. Everything went great. It's opening doors now because I've made some great connections. And my mm -hmm. plan now is to really focus on fundraising more and getting these right. programs that I want to get, you know, into the Bronx. Um, epilepsy, mm -hmm. November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. So I really want to do something then. So I'm going to start doing my work with that. But um, I also know there's always room for improvement, especially always. when you want to grow. You know, one of the things I want to uh, use fundraising money for is to get equipment that's needed. Seize the Cure involves music. I need good mics. I need a good system that I don't have to worry about the DJ not having. And, you know, there's just certain things I, I want to do. I want to have in my possession for Seize the yeah. Cure. And I always sit back afterwards and say, yeah, this was great. But what are some of the things I would do differently next time? Or having an assistant is one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Yeah, everybody kept telling me, you need help. You need help. You need help. She would not take the help, you guys. She would not take our help. She's like, mm -mm, nope, I got it. I'm I'm going to do it. She didn't want our help, you guys. She wanted us to be on time. I, and she wanted I will us to take your help. Listen, ahead of time, I will take your help for the next. Trust me, I will. I proved to myself that I could do it. This was more of a personal thing for me because <laughs> I had some real trauma that, that happened that... um 
you know, affected me even wanting to do CE Secure at one point. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, I need to be able to do this. I need to, I need to push myself. I need to prove this to myself. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing I would say with, <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Go, please don't stop with your music because I know music, like you said, is therapy. Um, it's cathartic for people, but I will say, be careful with the earbuds because the the ones that don't have the cords, I don't know how they refer to them. They can cause seizures, you guys, because the waves that they give off can conflict sometimes with what your brain is already doing. And because it's so close, it's in your ear. Interesting. They've had several people that had didn't have seizures until they started using the earbuds. So that's why I, I only use them um, if I'm working out or if I've had a day and I'm like just walking, I might listen, but I limit my time with those. So be careful. You just gave me an idea. I never knew that first and foremost. So you taught me something. I never like those things anyway, because I just don't like things in my ears. I just, I just don't like it. But you just kind of gave me an idea, which I'm not going to say on the show. I'm going to talk to you privately about I'm it. I'm going to say one thing too. And I don't care. Like I said, I'm 48 now. I'm, I say, it's, I said what I said, who's going to check me? Cause I ain't got no money. So you can sue me all you want to. I don't care. I didn't have this seizure until I got my first iPhone. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Wait a minute. I had blackberries, boo. I loved my little purple black, I had blackberries. I had the old school phone. I had the flip up phone. I did not get a seizure until about three months after I had my first blackberry. And I used to sit on um, my first, excuse me, my first iPhone. And I used to sleep with my iPhone next to my pillow, everywhere. Hold and on. now, you making the connection, right? No, I know I'm going over the time here, but I have to say this. Because, okay, at the event, there was a young lady who was speaking her testimony. And during her testimony, she was having seizures. Some people didn't realize it until they noticed it. She was speaking. Okay. And she kept freezing. I know who you're talking about. She okay. sure did. Yep. And I caught it. And that's why I was sitting. That was the one person that I was sitting right in the front that nobody was pulling me my attention away because I noticed something was wrong. And I got yep. my mom. And sure enough, they confirmed she was having seizures up there. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. But the interesting thing is, oh, goodness, excuse me. The interesting thing is afterwards, she kept, you know, she was embarrassed and apologized. I said, you're in the perfect place for that to happen. Don't worry. You know, we're, you're good. You know, I know what it was. She asked me if the men that were, there were gentlemen there that were using their phones recording. She asked me if they were using an iPhone. And I said, I'm not sure why. She says, because the iPhones trigger her seizures. Wow. She said oh, that. Oh, you just said that. I'm like. There you go. And, and these, these are the things and the conversations that we need to have so that people can do the research. I've even done my own, like, I'll just call them ghetto hypothesis, ghetto researches. <laughs> I take a week, I said, for this week, I'm only going to sleep with my phone far away from me in the living room, out of my bedroom in the living room and see how I feel. I feel different. I sleep different. I said, okay, next week. I'm going to take the chance and I'm going to sleep with the phone, maybe not right next to me, but on my dresser. So it's still closer to me. And I feel, I still feel that whatever that is, I feel it. I said, okay, next week, let's try right next to my pillow. And if I do something like that, I make sure that around my bed, I line it with whatever pillows that I just got for bed. And that's, it's the worst sleep ever. I have crazy dreams, Tara, when I sleep near the phone. Um, I find with this latest iPhone, the light is brighter at night. Even if it's across the room, when it goes, when it's someone's calling, I can see the light from all the way across the room. Like, what is that? So there's definitely some research to be done there. Interesting. See, I don't even like iPhones, so I, I'm an Android. You know, I'm one of the stubborn Android users. I so now y'all like, might have been on to something. I used to make fun of y'all, but I might have to apologize. Y'all might be <laughs> on to something. Android all the way. What? That's what my ex used. <laughs> He's like, you'll see. <laughs> you might be right. 
really interesting. When I get when I get on the phone tonight, I'm gonna I gotta talk about this. Please do. Very interesting. Because what'll happen is you'll find people start coming out with their testimonies or making connections. Like, wait a minute, earbuds. Come on, that was those were those were iPods. That's the one advice I will give anyone that has epilepsy, or if you have a child with epilepsy, or a loved one with epilepsy. Do your own test to find out your own. Sometimes you, unfortunately, you have to do certain things to know if it's that's something true. that's a trigger for you. And your triggers change throughout life. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah. like, even as an adult, you may have, let the person that, that you trust know what you're doing. You know what? I want to see if liquor is a trigger for me. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink something, you know, but stay with me just in case. Just in case. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the reality. There's no way you're going to know unless you actually do your own self-monitoring and testing. I'm telling you the end for me, like the, the I'm hardheaded. So the last straw for me was when I had that one in 2019 and I had been up all night partying with my friends in Chicago. Um, I had maybe an hour of sleep. I had to hop back on a plane. I did not take my medication as advised, but throughout the whole flight, now that I think about it, I'm listening to my AirPods. As soon as I get off the plane, I felt a little loopy because I knew I was sleepy. So I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? Let me let me just sit here for a minute before I go pick up my car. Nothing happened. I felt fine. Boyfriend called like, you good? I'm, I'm good. I got a block away from my house. I had been listening to my iPhone, which is connected to my car, play the whole trip. I woke up in an ambulance, ma'am. I had a whole seizure behind the wheel. And thankfully, this is God, the um, police officer was sitting in the Dunkin' Donuts. And he said, I saw the way you turned that corner. And I knew either you were falling asleep or you were having some type of seizure or you were narcoleptic something. And he was trained, thank God, on how to bust the window, stop it, put it in a the car was the front got a little damaged. I came out unscathed, woke up, did not know where I was, like, what is going on? They said, ma'am, you had a seizure behind the wheel. And when you do that, they take your license for about a year and you have to keep showing them. Um, you probably know this periodically that you're seizure free, but they won't give you that license back until you've been seizure free for six months right. to a year. And Which I'm many glad. People, many people lie because they're in a position that they have to drive. And have to. here's the thing, you know, it's wrong. Yeah. It puts people lives at risk. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. what are you offering people that need to take if you have epilepsy and you have children that you're a single mom, let's say, or a single father and you have epilepsy. Wow. I didn't even you think about that. To get your kid around. Wow. Think about I didn't what even think about us parents have. There was a time that I wasn't supposed to drive a long time ago and I was forced to get behind the wheel. Wow. It, it's it's real. So where is the support? What's a what is available to people with epilepsy or any for that example, any neurological condition for that? What's available and why aren't we having these conversations? It's like they have conversations about everything else. But I feel like if enough people start talking about it, they will do something about it. And what I can say to people that are forced to drive, I didn't want to drive. I was more than happy to take my little Ubers. <laughs> you know, I, it's New York. Driving is stressful for me. So oh, yeah. I was like, please take the license. I'm good. I don't care. But um, it's a conversation that needs to be had. And please, God forbid, don't lie. If you get your license taken, please let them have it and do what they say, because you could be putting someone else's life in jeopardy. So I've not had one like that ever again in life. Praise God. I have not had God. drinks since then. Um, and they said, if you are forced to drive, maybe you don't have the money or whatever the case, maybe you have a child. Like you said, they said, if you get an aura behind the wheel, just pull over. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not, you know, I'm not sure if it's an aura. If you feel stress, pull the hell over, breathe. Breathing is a way you can teach people to de-stress, um, CBD. Um, you can, what's the, uh, drink, um, it's like a ginger tea mixed with, 
uh, you have to make your own concoction. Uh, magnesium, like she said, zinc, B12. I've even heard vitamin D, which a lot of times people of color yes. struggle with. Vitamin D is affected from the medication, seizure medications. They affect the vitamin D and your liver. Wow. You have to constantly get your blood, your blood work. Make sure that your liver is on point. Everything is okay because they do affect. Just like psychiatric medication, okay, that they cause seizures. Seizure medications cause psychiatric conditions. <laughs> okay, it's one. So yeah, and, and I learned I learned this, you know, through my own personal experience. My parents learned with me. Um, it's yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's lot. A lot. I, I tried to get my son, and here's another thing I'm advocating for. I'm I'm sick of not being able to afford certain things that are for a life threatening situation. I wanted a um, I wanted the the dogs the the dogs that are trained in seizure safety. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars. What? Thousand dollars per what year per, per dog. dog? Per dog. What? Ten thousand dollars for a dog. So I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> the way you said it, I'm not laughing at people. I'm laughing at the way you said it. Because, because it's just, it just doesn't make sense. You mean to tell me that all the money that is spent on every time he has a seizure, every injury, he had to have, uh, he had uh, shoulder surgery from the dislocations. I mean, let's go on and on. The ambulance, how much that costs, the hospital stays, all that money and something that could be with him and save him every time and avoid injury and sense the seizure. These dogs, let me tell you something. These dogs sense the seizure before it happens. I've seen them. I've seen videos. These dogs are incredible. $10,000. Wow. And insurance will not cover that. They won't cover it. And why are they so expensive? You can have, put it this way. You Especially if you have a big dog. Okay, now my son is six foot six feet tall and he at the time he was 200 and something pounds so he would need a big dog but you could have your own dog and get them trained you can get them trained absolutely and it's but i just saw on the news they have all these dogs unfortunately in the the pet you, uh, have all these dogs that have, yeah, you have all these dogs that have no homes put them to good use I just thought now you now you got me thinking now. Now I want to investigate that. How do we train these dogs and get them to people that really need them? Especially people like me. I live alone. I like living alone, but this isn't safe. My because son, I'm not always home. Home. He, what I, that? My son's gonna be on his own one day. He's 21. He's gonna be 22. He wants to have his own. It would be great for him to have a dog that could just make sure. And, and that's what I'm saying. How do how how do you deny someone something that saves their life with a condition that they have that a pet is trained for because they don't have ten thousand dollars now i can see having to have a doctor write a note saying yes so and so needs i can see having to have a doctor script but come on ten i don't ten that's a down payment for a house somewhere i'm gonna look let's look into that i like that let's look into an event for um Epilepsy Awareness Month. Let's look into the dogs. Let's look into the iPhones. <laughs> There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that's available. Wow. There are a lot of things available for safety for people with seizures, but people can't afford it. They can't afford it because it's not for you, ma'am. It's pr privileged. These are privileged provisions. Wow. Ooh, that, should be, that should be an iPod. I mean, a uh, podcast. Privileged provisions. Privileged provisions. Okay. Yep. Ain't for you. Mm -hmm. Got it. But well, we can make it. We can make it for them because that, oh, that's not where... for me. Actually, it's not going to be for us because we're not claiming this. We're going to be over this. I'm glad. Thank God that you have been seizure free. I had one a couple months back, and it was my own fault because I was being stubborn and I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. But it was very mild. It was. Um, I knew I had one because I woke up with this horrible migraine and I have for, I don't forget, I didn't take the meds um, right before I went to sleep, which okay. I advised to do because I knew I had something to do very, very early in the morning. 
and they tend to kind of just mm-hmm. mellow you out. And I'm like, nah, I got to be on my A game. And sure enough, I woke up, my tongue was bitten in the back. I'm like, here we go with this. <laughs> but it was my fault. I didn't do what I was Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I don't, it doesn't ever come back, at least not a convulsion. Um, I still have seizure activity. But right now I put myself through a detox. I refuse to take medication until I have a VNS, which okay. is the vagus nerve stimulator. Okay. So it's in my chest and it's connected to my brain. And okay. what it does is it comes with a magnet. So if I feel a seizure coming, you swipe it and it stops the seizure. And pretty much it's set just like medication where you take at a certain time at a certain dosage. It's set at a certain time and it goes off every few minutes. However, the doctor sets it. Mine, mine has been dead for 20 years. Wow. <laughs> so it, it needs to come out because now it's just sitting there and it's just dangerous that it's, it's dangerous it's now. Battery operated, you know, machine. So I have a dead battery that's been there for going on 20 years. So it needs wow. to come out. But until it comes out. That at that point, I want to have my EEG, know how much seizure activity I'm having. And then if I need to be on medication, I, I would, I'm going to look into CBD oil before I do any kind of pills or anything like that. Please do that. The CBD, I do the, um, the CBD edibles. Um, I don't, I've never been a person that smoked or did, t- I don't do THC. I can't handle it. Yeah. But if you can, I found that the CBD with just a, tiny bit of THC before bedtime does wonders. Um, I just don't like when I wake up, I still feel kind of too decompressed. You know what I mean? But they do work as a great alternative and the doctor will prescribe it for you. And you don't have to smoke. You can just do the little edible Mm -hmm. that you take, uh, or you can do the oil, like she said. And I found that to be very, very effective. I'm not a weed. I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke. I hate smoke. Yeah. But do what's best for you, you guys. Um, Everybody's different, just like she said. And please never stop seeing the doctor. Whatever you're doing, do not stop seeing the neurologist. And the worst thing you could do is if they prescribe something for you, is to cut it cold turkey because that can cause a seizure. It sends your body into a seizure when you stop yeah. taking the meds. You have to be weaned off. And it sounds like you're doing an excellent job. Please tell them where they can find you how they can donate, support I your I definitely will. I wanted to say one more thing to anyone watching. If you don't know anyone with epilepsy or you don't have epilepsy, Seizure Cure is not just about epilepsy. It's about seizure safety in general. You do not have to have epilepsy to have seizures. There are people that have seizures only when they drink or during pregnancy, or they you may have seizures when you have a high fever. You do not have to have epilepsy to have seizures. The point is it's epilepsy awareness and it's seizure safety awareness. So you can support, it applies to everyone. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Seize the Cure, or my artist page, TJ Vito. Same with Instagram, Seize the Cure, on Seize underscore the underscore cure. Uh, TJ Vita, same thing, TJ underscore Vita. Um, email is seize the cure, seize the cure number four epilepsy at gmail.com. Um, to donate, we have Cash App, seize the cure, and we also have PayPal, which is under the Gmail, seize the cure number four epilepsy, and Zell, the same thing, seize the cure number four epilepsy. Thank you so much. And it's just, um, like I said, a lot of, unfortunately, people don't know until it happens to them or someone that they love. But I just came to my mind, Lil Wayne has been dealing with epilepsy for years. And I hope that he has stopped drinking the concoctions that he used to rap about because I'm thinking, sir. That's an interesting one because of what you just said. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been asked, I've been asked, cause I'm very, I'm so, I'm very principle orientated. And Seize the Cure for me is about awareness and people who really struggle and they can't find a they can't find a good treatment and they do everything to try to help themselves. And mm-hmm. when I see people have something and take it like it's a joke and do certain activities that pretty much encourage their condition. I've had people ask me, would you, if he wanted to come to an event and speak, you know, would you let him? I guess it depends on what he's going to say. 
<laughs> like, is your testimony about don't be like me? I've learned the hard way and found, you know, that this is not, that's something different. But yeah. I don't want false representation of this condition and the severity of it. And you're, yeah, that's just a very interesting one. <laughs> what I can't stand about his situation is he's so freaking smart. Like he's yeah. like one of those gifted and talented kids and they don't give him enough credit for that because of the other nonsense that he sometimes involves him. So I haven't heard anything lately because he's older now. You know what I mean? He has his own yeah. children. So I think he's a little bit more calm now. But he's been suffering with horrible seizures ever since he was a, a kid. Well, I would love to see that. Let's try to let's try to I'll try to see what I can do. <laughs> Cause I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll max out an event if he was there. <laughs> the, and our, our gentlemen, because it's not just the ladies, our men, like she said, her son, yeah. boys deal with this too. And sometimes they keep things very private because they're it's their pride. They don't want people to know and you know to experience that as a young man or a grown man. Sometimes they get teased, they might feel like it emasculates them to say, but this is your life, you guys. You could literally die in your sleep and nobody could even know. And that's got, like I said, now my passion is people who live alone, children that are going off to college that are going to be in their dorm room by themselves. Yeah. Everybody needs to know how to deal with this, you guys. All right. Charles, oh, the I website. Think it's One more. The website. That's why I forgot www.seizethecure4epilepsy.com oh, There you go And I'll list it on our page as well Thank you guys so much um, If you, you have any questions me. you can always reach out Thank you for being here I know you're busy you're I, like, I'm thankful to God for connecting us Because we, we're going to be doing something Can we talk about them Listen there was somebody in the Bible that had a seizure That's another show They existed in biblical times too Okay, But that's another show have a great rest of the week, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. We love you. And until next time, we're out of here.